Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? In this video I'm going to make a double-sided chessboard. On one side it's going to be a regular style chessboard with 64 squares, and on the other side it's going to be a Qiangqi board, which is probably a mispronunciation of what's commonly known as Chinese chess. Apparently it's the number one board game in the world. This is going to be a pretty complicated build. On the regular chess side, it's going to be fairly standard, except that I'm going to be inlaying algebraic notation around the perimeter of the frame. And on the Chinese side, there's going to be a lot of CNC work and a lot of inlay. And I've never done inlay on a CNC before, so I figure if I'm going to do it, I may as well go big. So let's get started. <laughs> The regular chessboard is going to be made from wenge and curly maple. So I'm going to start by jointing the edge of the wenge so that I can run it along the fence of my bandsaw. The squares are going to be two and a quarter inches by two and a quarter inches. So I'm cutting this to be about two and a half inches. And now that the wenge is narrower, I can run the face through the jointer, and then I'll rejoint the edge as well to make sure that it's square. With the bottom and one of the edges jointed, now I can run it through my planer to get the top face parallel to the bottom. And I had some curly maple already jointed on the bottom and the edge, so I'm running it through the planer as well to get it the same thickness as the wenge. Next, I rip these to be exactly two and a quarter inches wide. To make two and a quarter inch squares, I need to have wood that's at least 18 inches long so that I can get eight squares out of each piece. But I also need to account for the kerf or the thickness of the blade each time I make one of those eight cuts. So I need to add an extra inch for that. And so in fact, I'm cutting these to be 20 inches just so I have a little bit extra. These pieces are sitting on top of a clamping fixture that I made specifically for making chess boards and I'm really glad that I made it because it really assists with clamping and it ensures that everything is flat. And while the glue is curing, I'll quickly show you how I went about making the clamping fixture. I started to cut these pieces with a drill and a jigsaw, but then I realized that I have a CNC router, so why not make use of it? And I'm really glad that I did, because it made sure that everything was cut the same. And I have some interlocking cross members, so this is really like a mini torsion box that is guaranteed to remain flat. And I have plenty of places where I can attach clamps around each of the four edges. With the first glue up done, I'm running it through the sander. And then using my crosscut sled, I'll square up one of the ends. And then I'll run it along my table saw fence to get eight equal two and a quarter inch pieces. And there's just a little bit left over at the end. And now it's ready for the second glue up.
And you can see with this clamping fixture, I'm able to clamp all the way around, which was something I could not do on a regular workbench. While the glue is curing, I'm going to use my CNC machine to start cutting some of the inlay pieces. This wood is Paduk, and it's going to be used for the Chinese characters that are going to be inlaid into the Chinese side. So right now the CNC is cutting the male inlay pieces. While the CNC is running, I can cut the pieces for the Chinese side. The Chinese side is going to be 16 inches by 16 inches, and it's each player's side is comprised of 28 squares, and each square is 2 inches by 1.75 inches, and those two player sides are separated by a 2 inch river that runs through the middle. The squares are created by having grid lines that run across the top of each player's side. I'm just checking back at the CNC to see how the carving is going. And now I'm marking the center location of the river because I'm going to put it on the CNC next to cut the female portion of the inlay. These male pieces are actually mirror images of the female pieces because I'm going to flip these over and insert them. So those Paduk male inlay pieces are going to fit into these recessed female areas. And in the center I'm carving two cranes, and rather than using inlay for the cranes, these are going to be filled with dark brown epoxy. I mentioned that each square is one and three quarter inches by two inches, so this piece is going to be used for three additional squares. So three times 1.75 is five and a quarter, and that's the width that I'm cutting here. And I'm cutting it to be just a little over 16 inches long so that there's a little bit left to trim off. Since I didn't have any experience doing inlay with a CNC, I did the inlay in this small piece first before gluing it up. That way, if something didn't go right, I didn't have to trash the entire board. I could just replace this one little piece. And now I have five maple strips to glue together to create the 16 by 16 square. Each of these five pieces is sized so that the glue lines will align with the grid lines, and that way the glue lines will be totally concealed.
While that's gluing up, I'm going to prepare the frame that goes around the Chinese playing area. This frame is going to be one inch all the way around the board. And it's going to have a quarter inch strip of paduk inlaid into the frame to have a little accent stripe. And I'm running these through the dado blade twice just to make sure that I have a clean and consistent cut. And then I'll cut the paduk and sand it down to the proper dimension so that it can fit into that slot. Trim everything up to get it exactly 16 by 16. And then it's ready to glue on to the other side of the chessboard. I had to make sure that everything was oriented properly so that when the white square is in the lower right corner for the white player, you can flip the board over from side to side, not from player to player, but from left to right, and the Chinese characters will be oriented correctly. I can't read the characters, so I just had to pattern match them. But I asked a friend who told me that the two left characters mean Chu River, and the two characters on the right mean Han Border. And these calls come in really handy to make sure that everything is properly centered. And that's especially important when I have a board on the other side because everything has to align to meet properly with the frame. I'll sand the paduk down to be flush with the top of the frame. And it took a couple of iterations to get it to fit properly. Before applying the dark brown epoxy, I'm coating the surface with shellac to help prevent it from absorbing into the maple. And now it's time to cut the grid lines, and you can see that it lines up perfectly with the glue line around the frame. 
If I were to do this again, I would program the CNC differently so that rather than cutting the entire grid all at once, I would cut the lines that are going across the grain first and then cut along the grain, and that would minimize tear out. The way that it was cutting here is it cut along the grain first and then across the grain, and that resulted in a little bit of tear out. While I was putting in the epoxy, I was thinking somebody on YouTube is going to tell me I should be using a syringe. And then I realized that I had one, so I went and got it and that made it a lot easier and there was a lot less waste by using a syringe. And I used a heat gun to release any small air bubbles. While the epoxy is curing, it's time to start working on the frame. The frame is going to be three inches wide. And I'm marking the ends of each of the pieces so that I can have them properly sequenced to have the grain continue. I'm cutting a slot on the inner edge of the frame, and this is going to fit over the plywood. And I made some minor adjustments to sneak up on the fit carefully. And then I cut it to the three inch width. And I also cut a slot in the outside edge of the frame to hold the edge banding. We're not done with the inlay on the Chinese side because there need to be some triangles at the intersection points of the grid lines. I also realized that I forgot to cut the X's for the grid lines, so I'm cutting those now as well. The triangles are also going to be filled with paduk. While the CNC machine is running, I can cut the pieces for the edge band. I cut the mail inlay in two passes. First, I'm using a clearance bit to remove the bulk of the material. That's a lot faster. I'll run the edge banding pieces through the drum sander to get them down to the precise size. And now I'm doing the second pass with a V bit for the fine details.
And now I'll cut the edge band to the length and glue it in. And now I need to come back and add some epoxy for those X's. The triangles were pretty good, but they weren't perfect, so I'm using a little bit of Paduk dust and I'll mix it with some glue to fill any voids. And while I'm working on fitting the frame, I have the CNC machine running to start cutting the male inlay pieces for the algebraic notation. Now that I've run the clearance bit, I'm switching over to a V bit for the finer details. I realize that the standard for algebraic notation is lowercase, but the client asked me to use uppercase for this board.
After gluing in the inlay, I'll cut off the excess with the bandsaw and then run it through the drum sander. And now on the white player's side, I'm carving this well-known quotation from Irving Chernev. And the last thing on the CNC, on the opposite side of the quotation, is to put my logo and a serial number. Before attaching the frame, I'm cutting a small gap that's going to remain between the frame and the edge of the playing area. And this is intentional so that when the wood expands and contracts, and it will, even when it's glued to plywood, it will expand and contract a little bit. This will prevent any separation from appearing, and there will always be a gap, and it will look intentional rather than something that changes from season to season. Next, I'm marking the locations of the tenons, and then I will route out each of the mortises. And now it's time to glue it up and I needed to move pretty quickly while gluing this up because the glue only has an open time of about eight minutes, eight to 10 minutes. And if it starts to seize up before you're finished, then that spells big trouble. I like to start the sanding by hand so that I don't be too aggressive and end up with some recessed areas. And then I'll finish up with a random orbit sander. Another benefit to having the gap between the frame and the playing area is that with a random orbit sander, I can sand right up to the edge of the frame without colliding with the squares.
And lots of hand sanding for all of the edges and the corners. And then it's ready to finish. I start by applying de-waxed shellac. Normally this is something that I could just brush on, but because I have paduke and maple side by side, brushing can cause the color from the paduke to bleed into the maple. So it's a lot better to use a sprayer for this. One of the advantages of shellac is that it seals the wood grain and it requires me to use far less lacquer. After the shellac is dried, then I will sand it with 320 grit sandpaper. and then I sprayed on four coats of pre-catalyzed lacquer. So I gotta ask, would you make it? <laughs>